Hello, welcome back to chapter five. We're going to continue with the statement of cash flows. This is the financial statements that most students are not familiar with. So I'm going to go, I'm going to st uh, go through this step by step. So first of all, in the statement of cash flow, it, uh, the statement of cash flow is very important because we want to distinguish between cash versus profit. And this may sound ironic because on the one hand, we want the we want to use the accrual method, which allow us to match revenue to cost. But at the same time, the accrual method distorts the cash flow of the firm. So to get a clear picture of the performance of a company, we need both. We need both the income statement, which is typically um, organize or prepare according to the accrual method and also the statement of cash flows. There are two methods to uh, create the statement of cash flow. One is a direct method and the other is an indirect method. The direct method is easier to understand. However, it's very difficult to reconcile, meaning match the numbers in the direct method to the numbers that you see in the income statement and the balance sheet. The indirect method is actually start with the numbers that you contain that you find in the balance sheet and the income statement. However, it's a little bit harder to understand or interpret what the numbers mean as you construct it. The important thing to keep in mind is that regardless of whether or not you use the direct method or the indirect method, the ending balance, the cash inflow and the cash outflow at the uh, at the end of the calculations are identical. So both methods would give you the same numbers, uh, but the, the steps make them uh, easier to interpret or easier to uh, match up to the income statement and the balance sheet. To demonstrate how to construct the uh, statement of cash flows using both direct and indirect method, we're going to go through a step-by-step -step example. Um, so again, if you have not downloaded the spreadsheet, please do so now and um, so pause the video and do that. Uh, next, we're going to switch over to um, uh, spreadsheet software and I'll walk through step-by-step -step how to construct the statement of cash flows. So as you open the spreadsheet template, you'll notice that there are multiple pages or tabs. Um, so the one that the table the uh, table we're working on is table five. So tap on connect the tab on table five, uh, table five point five, and it says cash flow direct method. So just to go over a little bit in terms of um, the construction, in addition to showing you how to construct the cash flow statement, I'll also be explaining some tips in terms of how to use um, a spreadsheet software effectively. Um, the legend here says anything that is code shaded in light blue, you have to create the formula. So the first, uh, First, I want to give you a brief overview of this worksheet. So the top part of this worksheet, what I've done is really just bring in, bringing in information from the balance sheet and from the and, and sometimes from the income statement. So the reason why is that by putting all the information you need on the same page makes reference that, re referencing them a lot easier. And um, another important thing is you don't it minimizes how much you have to go uh, to switch between page to page as you construct the formulas. Um, the other important um, principle in designing spreadsheets um, formulas is that you use well, um, cell reference instead of copying the numbers or the values themselves. Here we want to pull in the ending balance of the year and the beginning balance of the year. Remember the balance sheet, the value is effective on a particular day. So let's say we're working with the year 2019. Then the ending balance will be the value as of December 31st, 2019. Now you would think that beginning balance will be January 1st. However, very few business um, does an inventory on the first of the year. Most of them did the inventory at the end of the year. In fact, the beginning balance in this case will be the same as the ending balance of the last year. So if the ending balance is from December 31st, 2019, then the beginning balance will be from December 31st, 2018. So let's take a look at how we will do that. 
So to start a form formula, we're going to start with the equal sign. So make sure that your pointer or your mouse is on the right cell. So in this case, this will be cell B7. And we start with the equal sign. And you'll see that it's being reflected in the formula tab. Once the equal sign is in place, then we can move our mouse or our pointer to where we want to. So we know this comes from the balance sheet and this is supplies. So we're going to go to the balance sheet and we're going to look at supplies. And this is the ending balance. So that is 2019. And you just either click the check mark or press enter. And now we have the formula that reference B14 from the balance sheet that tells us this is um, the supply for the ending balance. We'll do the same thing for prepaid insurance. So use the equal sign and then go back to the balance sheet and we look at prepaid insurance again, the ending balance. Also have other current assets, so we'll do the same. And you may ask, well, why do we not include the other current assets, such as cash accounts, receivable, receivables, and inventory? The reason is because we are working with the direct method, and it will become obvious in a little bit. So in here, um, we want to add up these three. So we're going to sum up these three items. And here, I can make it a lot faster by just simply copying this over. So, um, and the reason I can do that is because if I look at the balance sheet, I notice that this column for 2019, which is the ending balance, is right next to the column, which is the end, uh, the beginning balance, uh, December 31st, 2018, because the um, they are located right, the columns are located right next to each other. I can easily copy this, um, and you can use the um, edit and copy function, you can use right click. A lot of times I use um, shortcut or keystrokes. Uh, if you create a lot of spreadsheet, it will be very helpful for you to be familiar with those. Getting used to using keystroke is also helpful, especially if you are um, trying to work with large spreadsheets. So for example, to select a range of cells, you can hold down the shift key and you can see the um, keystroke on the side of the screen and you press down the down arrow key. Now to copy, you hold down the control key and then the letter C. And to paste, you move your mouse and you can hold down the control key and the letter V. And now it's copied and you can double check the formula to make sure that the correct formula has, is being created by your software. To summarize, you want to start a formula with the equal sign and then use the mouse to move to the page that contains the relevant information. The other thing that I want you to pay attention to is the title that I put into um, each the setup. You want your spreadsheet to be organized and labeled in such a way that is obvious to the user. Always create your spreadsheet with the intent of it being used by someone else who cannot read your mind. So here the title says these are the current liabilities except accounts payables and taxes payables. So you want, so if you go back to look at the balance sheet under the current as liability column. So there's accounts payable and taxes payable. Those two are not included in the summary table that you're creating. So which leaves wages payable, current maturity of mortgage and other current liabilities. And if you go back to table 5.5, those are exactly the three items that you have. So I want you to pause the video at this point and go ahead and complete the remaining three segments of this table. So complete the current liabilities, except accounts payables and taxes payable. Um, and we have a summary title for that. We call that current liabilities with other vendors. Just like for current asset, we, we label these current assets with other vendors. So um, go ahead and complete that and come back and check that you get the right information.
Hello, welcome back. So take a moment to check that you did get the correct answer. I'm going to um, click here so you'll be able to see the formulas um, one by one. And you can always pause the video to spend more time on any individual items. Okay, so now we are ready to start the next part. So remember, all we have done so far is to bring in information from the balance sheet. Again, the reason we are doing that is just so that it's easier for us to construct the rest of the statement of cash flows. The next item we're going to construct are purchases. So the reason why I want to separate this from the others is because to compute the purchases that the company make for the year, we have to use both income statement items and balance sheet items. So the formulas for computing purchases is cost of goods sold minus beginning inventory plus ending inventory. So if you think through the logic of this formula, it is also important to understand that. Um, again, I refer you to the textbook which describes this in um, each of these formulas in more details. So we want to look at how much the company has purchased. So cost of goods sold is the materials that the company used during the year. But some of that were left over inventory from previous year. So we need to take away beginning inventory. We didn't use all our purchases in the year because some of the purchases is still on, on hand at the end of the year and they become ending inventory. So we need to add that back in. So that's the formula we will use. So in order to, create, to compute purchases, again, we start with the equal sign to start a formula. And the first item is cost of goods sold, which comes from the income statement. So we'll click on to the income statement, cost of goods sold. And the formula says minus beginning inventory. So it's helpful for you to have the formula on hand or have it written down if you have not had it memorized. So inventory is here and beginning inventory is $14,200. And we have to add back plus ending inventory. So ending inventory is $12,800. Once we have finished our formula, do not click on anything else, just press enter. So that is our purchases. So again, practice using uh, creating this formula. If you ever make mistakes, the easiest thing is to press the escape key to make sure that you are not in the middle of creating a formula. And then you can delete the formula and then you can start again. So make sure that you, you are not in the middle of something. So, and once you are clear, you can press equal and you can start and create the formula again. So um, it takes a few practices if you are not used to creating formula, especially formulas that involve multiple pages. All right, now we have done all the preliminary work and we are, re we are ready to construct the statement of cash flows using the direct method. Okay, so um, to get the information uh, we need, um, all, the, uh, all the other information that we have created is just to make our job easier as we construct the um, statement of cash flows. So the first segment of the statement of cash flows is to compute cash flows provided by operating activities. So these are, uh, these are cash that are generated or cash that are spent um, from the day-to-day -day operation of the firm. So a couple of things I want you to notice. Um, the statement of cash flow is also a flow statement, meaning that it covers a period of time. So in this particular case, it goes from January 1st through December 31st. To make it easier for you, I also included the formula uh, to the side. Um, so you, you'll need to scroll over to see the complete formula. Again, it will be most helpful if, if you're creating this for the first time to copy this formula on a, um, on a notepad or print this out so that you can, you can see it easily as you are constructing um, the formulas. Play, uh, so sales, um, or the first item we want to take into to compute is cash that we get from our customers. Because we use we allow uh, this particular business allow customers to pay on credit, it has accounts receivables. So you, some of the cash that you collect from customers were sales that you made last year. 
And from the sales that you make this year, some of your customers have not paid up yet. And those will remain on the book as ending balance for accounts receivable. So, so cash from your customers is your sales plus the beginning accounts receivable, meaning money that you collect from last year's sales minus um, accounts receivable, um, the ending balance, which are money that your customers still owe you. So let's go ahead and create that. So we start with the equal sign that we always did. Net sales comes from the income statement. So here we have net sales or net revenue. So remember sales and revenue can be used interchangeably. We add to it accounts receivable. So that is from the balance sheet. So we add the beginning balance of accounts receivable. So this is the beginning balance. And we subtract from it ending balance. And we finish the formula by pressing enter. So don't click anywhere until you press enter. And now we have computed um, cash from our customers. We do a similar thing for cash that we pay to our suppliers. Notice that we start with purchases. We computed purchases earlier on, so that's what we will use. So make sure that you are on the right cell and then start with the equal sign. So first we have purchases. We're going to add beginning accounts payable. Accounts payable is on the balance sheet. So we will go back to that. And um, we need to see accounts payable. So here it is. And we add the beginning balance. So this is our beginning balance. And we're going to subtract the ending balance. And this is our ending balance. To finish the formula, we press Enter. The next item is cash paid to other vendors. And here we want to look at, again, take a look at the formula. So we have, and here is a little bit trickier because um, instead of a single item, we have um, current asset and also current liability. And in here is really important that you pay attention to um, the formula and also include the parentheses. So this is a very long formula. Again, if you cannot see the whole formula, make sure that you copy it on a separate piece of notes that will help you with creating the formula. All right, so we're going to start with the equal sign. And the first item is total operating expense, and that comes from the income statement. So total operating expense. And then we need to subtract. So we're going to start with the minus sign. And the formula has an open parenthesis. So we're going to start with that. So make sure you enter all the parts of the formula before you move your arrow key. So the next item is beginning current asset other vendor. We have computed that in um, earlier on in the, the uh, cash flow direct method page. So we're going to go back there. Um, if you scroll up, here is total current asset with other vendors. And we want the beginning balance. So the beginning balance of current asset with other vendors is 51.50. And we want to subtract that. Subtract from that the ending balance of current asset other vendors. And then we want to add, so again, you have a parenthesis, uh, the beginning balance of current liability with other vendors. And also the subtract from it the ending balance of current liability with other vendors, which is the 42,300. So as you enter, every time you're clicking on something, you when you say add or subtract, you use the keyboard. Now we need to close the parentheses, and our formula is complete. We just need to press enter. So take a moment to fully understand this formula and try it on your own. Remember, again, if you make a mistake, just make sure you press the escape key and then delete whatever error you make and start over again. OK, the next few items are relatively straightforward. Um, Interest received, that's from the income statement. So we just go to income statement. We have interest revenue, that's money that we receive. And then interest paid, interest paid is also from the income statement, and that is interest expense. So those are money that we receive and money that we spend. 
taxes that we pay, again, because we use an accrual system, the tax, the cash amount that we pay on income tax is not the same as uh, the income tax expense. So you can refer to the formula. So the first part, taxes, uh, that's the tax expense. So we start with equal sign, and that comes from the income statement. So th that the provision for taxes, that's your tax expense for the year. And to that, we have to add beginning taxes payable. So the taxes payable are in the, so we add the add sign, the addition sign is from the balance sheet. So we go to the balance sheet now. And taxes payable, so we're on the beginning balance. And then we subtract, so we put the minus sign minus the ending balance of taxes payable. And now that our formula is complete, we'll press the Enter key. So now we have collected all the information, we can compute the cash flow that is provided by operating activities. And whether you're, you're at Adding or subtracting a number, uh, I have included that, in, included that in the label. So again, the label, you can create it so that your spreadsheet is much easier to be used by someone else, as well as to be interpreted by someone else. So here, we start again, to start the formula, we use the equal sign. And first, we have cash received from customers, so that's positive. Next, we saw that less, less means we have to subtract. So subtract cash pay to supplier. And the next item is also less, so that is subtract. Subtract cash pay to other vendors. Next, we're going to add, so we use the plus sign. Add interest receive, then less, so minus interest pay, and then less minus taxes pay. So now we have cash provided by operating activities. Remember in the beginning, we talked about statement of cash flow. We said the direct method is a lot easier to interpret, is a lot more difficult to retrieve information or match information to the income statement and balance sheet. So here you can see it is very straightforward. We receive $645,900 from our customer. We pay $412,700 in cash to our suppliers, $25,600 to other vendors. We get $1,800 in interest. We pay out $147,000 in interest, and we pay out $13,680 in tax. So our net cash flow generated for the year is $48,720. So that is the beauty of the direct method. It's very easy to see where cash come from and where they went. The next two items is relatively similar um, between the direct method and the indirect method. And this has to do with cash flow from investing activity and cash flow from financing activity. And here there is a semantic here, you, uh, whether or not you are selling fixed assets or you're purchasing fixed assets. Um, and you can, um, before you put this down, you can take a peek at uh, what is going on. A lot of times you don't really need this information from the balance sheet, um, but you should match it back to the balance sheet because um, depending on the size of the business, uh, for most entrepreneurs, they know very well during the year, did they sell some equipment and did they buy some equipment? So the, the important thing you have to recognize is that fixed assets may decrease in value, in value because of depreciation, but that Remember that depreciation is a non-cash expense, and therefore changes in uh, asset value due to depreciation really has nothing to do with, of, with whether or not you purchase additional equipment or you sell part of your equipment. So here we take our ending total fixed assets before depreciation minus beginning. If the ending is balance is larger than the beginning balance, that means we bought some. If the ending balance is less than the beginning balance, that means we sell something. Uh, so here uh, we we knew that uh, we bought some items, so we're gonna compute it as purchase of equipment. So again, a lot of times an uh, entrepreneur knows exactly how much money they have spent on equipment and fixed assets. So we have this um, earlier on, so we know we have our um, total ending balance is minus the beginning balance. 
So the difference tells us that we spent $21,000 in um, equipment. In fact, you can go down each line item and saw that um, we didn't buy any land, we didn't buy any, make any improvement, we didn't buy any building, we just spent $21,000 in equipment. So again, this item, um, I used the formula here to demonstrate how you can find the information from the balance sheet. But uh, for most entrepreneurs, they know precisely how much money they spend. So you add cash that you get from selling your equipment minus cash that you spend on purchasing the equipment. So you spend $21,000 um, from investing activities. Next, we're gonna take a look at um, borrowing. Uh, so financing activities can be borrowing or new cash from the entrepreneur. And um, in a not in a corporate, uh, meaning non-entrepreneur finance, um, same amount of cash flow, you will have the um, equity, change in equity um, in this uh, in this section as well. But in entrepreneur finance, a lot of times entrepreneur are trying to do um, cash flow forecasting before they figure out how to come up with the money. So um, investing, uh, putting more of their own equity in is definitely an option, but it's, not, uh, it's typically not done in the first round of um, cash flow forecasting. Once again, for an entrepreneur, obviously they will know if they take on a new mortgage or a new debt um, versus if they pay back part of their mortgage. Um, the formula for this one is a little bit, um, not intuitive um, and um, the reason is we want to maintain the same formula and same format so the logic is that if your mortgage went down so meaning that your ending balance is less than your beginning balance that means you have paid off part of your mortgage and that is, and, and so, and we want to express that as a positive number so that it, when you subtract the two, but subtract new borrowing from your repayment, you end up with a cash outflow. So the formula is a little bit weird. And the reason is because we want to maintain the same, uh, the same um, setup in the, in the um, cash flow statement. So just follow along the formula and I'll walk you through it. So you start with an equal sign. The first item is a negative sign, so we do minus. And the next item is a parenthesis, so we open parenthesis. We have ending long-term liability. Again, we have computed that here. Our ending long-term liability, this is the ending balance, is 625,000 minus the beginning balance. Beginning balance is 652,500. So, and then close parenthesis. Our formula is done, we press enter. And then to compute the net cash flow, we take, we add new borrowing and we subtract repayment. So we have a cash outflow of 27,500. So in the end, we get exactly what we're looking for. We pay back $27,500 in mortgage or the principal of the mortgage. And because we're paying back a mortgage, that is a cash outflow. Now that we have computed the three segment, Net cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities, we can compute our net change in cash. So our net change in cash is um, your cash flow from operating activity plus cash flow from investing activity plus cash flow from financing activity. So those are the three. So when we add these three subtotal together, we generated $220 of cash in net. So to compute our cash balance, we take the uh, our beginning balance. So this is cash balance uh, from the balance sheet. So again, we use the equal sign. We go to the balance sheet and pick up the beginning balance. So beginning balance is in cash is 28,000. $2,850. So just press enter. So that brings our beginning balance. And we say this is our net change in cash. So if you take our beginning balance plus our net change in cash, and that should give us our ending balance. And you can double check to make sure that you get the right answer because our ending balance is $3,070. 
So we have just complete, completed constructing the cash statement of cash flow using the direct method. We'll end the video here. In the next video, we're going to go over how to compute the cash flow using the indirect method.